recording episode 10 of After Hours at LMO Vapor Studios. San Antonio. My name is Cheyenne, and we are here at Alamo Vapor Studios recording episode 10 of After Hours. It's going down right now. And I am here with my good friend, Wolf Levy. How are you, everyone? <laughs> so, Wolf, what brings you in today? Well, you do, right? Since you're actually one of my oldest friends. Yay. So, uh, let's, talk, let's talk some music. You have uh, you have a lot of stripes on your belt for uh, you know your style and everything you've done. Uh, tell me uh, wh what is your latest project and uh, what inspired that? Well, the latest thing that's been released is this one here. It's called Primordial Electric Seance, and it's some of the more artsier stuff that I've done. So it's not going to be for everyone for sure, but it's um really psychedelic tribal theme stuff and it's like some of the most tribally i've always done implemented tribalism into the most everything i've done yeah really into it but i don't think anything sounded like ever more legit tribal than this the newest one primordial electric seance but it's not my favorite one that's just that's what i've been doing that's your reason recently. like if project. you saw me play a show in the last couple months i was doing this stuff right here okay and it's got a live track a 30 minute live track from paper tiger when i performed it live at paper tiger nice okay oh and it also has a track um it's a it's a really shitty recording but mm. it's still cool it's a little hey, it's, it's it low still works yeah yeah, yeah. So cool. but somebody took a recording of me performing at 9 11 noise fest in austin no nice. really super cool event and it's a if you go online to the band camp the bonus tracks are actually free to download okay so uh because I've known you for a while, and from the time I met you, your music has progressed so much. What what really inspires that motivation to do something different and to come out with sounds that are not normal to, you know, the average listener? Um, I don't know. It's hard to say exactly. I think it was a pretty natural progression for me. Yeah. Because if you do love, well, not just music, but sound, you know, mm -hmm. as a medium for yeah. art. Yeah. then I think naturally you're going to gravitate towards the more experimental noise stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not just about being catchy. It's about sound texture and experimentation and stuff. Oh yeah. It's your form of art. And you know, it really shows, uh, from everything that you've done, you know? So, uh, what is, uh, what is the genre, uh, basically you're categorized under and, uh, what is the definition of it? I'm going to be pretty, cliche here and say i'm one of those artists that it um i'm not that's not like i reject um being labeled some kind of genre because i definitely dabble in lots of different lots genres, of but different i mean there's no, there's no picking one of them and saying this is what i do you know yeah because i've done everything from literally like acoustic country singer songwriter type stuff yeah all the way to like psycho harsh noise yeah yeah, yeah. so there's no saying this is what i do I like for the most part to kind of think of the 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 themes that um are very recurrent and that I stay true to are psychedelic yeah yeah noise sound experimentation and, and tribalism nice so you also you also perform a lot like uh like one time a week or you know like sometimes I mean like times. it just depends sometimes yeah. twice a week you know what I mean sometimes yeah. I get tired. Because you know I mean? I'm like, yo, Wolf, <laughs> let's hang out. You're like, nah, I got a performance. I'm like, shit, yeah. that's what you said last time. <laughs> Sometimes I'll take a little hiatus, and I'm definitely going to have to go out once soon. 
Okay. But that's good because then it gives you more time to like write new yeah. stuff and get new stuff out there. So uh, tell me about the LP that you're working on currently. Uh, well, it's this one, the self-titled Wolf Party album. And it's my favorite thing that I've ever done. It came out on Valentine's Day this year. I put about two years of writing and recording into it. And, uh, I mean, Wolf Party is about so much more than this album, but it is my favorite thing that I've done. Mm -hmm. And I think not only is it, uh, like, a really cool story and, like, a really cool concept album and everything, yeah. but it also really showcases uh, the whole variety of kinds of things that Wolf Party is about musically. Brings the story together a lot, yeah. you know, with uh, everything that I've listened to. And it starts off, I think, like, A-side, like a noise rock album. It's like uh -huh. a like noise rock. And B-side gets more artsy and tribalism, experimental kind of, but it's my favorite thing. First. So, uh, do you do all your album artwork yourself? Most of it. My friend Shelby's done some of it, but most of the artwork um, I've, I've done myself. I'm pretty particular yeah. about how I want things to be portrayed. Yeah, no, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, like, uh, what's it called? How? Uh, what's your whole process in uh, making music? How often are you uh, dabbling and experimenting with different sounds and things like that? You know what? just literally every day all the time like, yeah that's my whole life that's what i do so i'm always experimenting for sure mm -hmm. and always stumbling into you know experiments that maybe worked you know what i mean and i'm like no this has to, that's how primordial electric seance came to be i was like, just experimenting with new equipment and stuff and i found a way for it all to go together just so perfectly yeah and i got right on it made, made sure it became something so nice. that, like, something recorded that people could listen to. Now, where where can people find you? Do uh, you like to use SoundCloud mostly? or I like to do SoundCloud for, like, those are, like, the loyal Wolf Party fans. Yeah. They really love me and really listen to me because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that's where I'm going to do... You know, because I get so excited when I write new stuff. So if I get really excited about something that I'm recording or I have recorded or experiencing with, I'm going to go ahead and post it on SoundCloud right away for people who are following me to listen to and get feedback on. And yeah. it'll be maybe even if you were following me for very long, I was posting these tracks, you know, a year, at least a year before they came out yeah. on SoundCloud, just because I was so excited. Which is, also, I was trying to scare the shit out of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But it's so awesome because you produce and you put out so much content, whether it's on Instagram or uh, SoundCloud. Uh, and, you know, it shows in the following and the people that support you. So that's really good that, you know, it's it's all in your consistency. You know, it's just like shooting right out there today. It's, it's all consistency. Yeah. It's really awesome. It's so cool that anybody listens to it at all yeah that it's be, even become a thing and i play live shows now and people fucking know what it is yeah you know, and that's really amazing because i would be doing this no matter what and i was doing this years before i ever shared it with anybody besides you know the closest friend yeah but this is what i would be doing in my bedroom in my spare time this is my art form this is how i you know express yourself deal with a lot of different things yeah. <laughs> and this is what i would be doing it's very it's such a perfect coincidence that some people actually happen to like it too of course you know it's your passion and everything the sounds great too you know so um what's another uh so you you recently uh was it an interview or no what was that publication that i saw you in uh recently was it uh the england or it's a pro well there was one I, that was that's pretty cool i was it was i think that was last i don't know if that was this year i think it was it last, was last year, year yeah but um, and I know it actually came out this year because it came out right really close to when this album came out. Yeah. So it, was, it was so perfect. But it was a Swedish article for an underground Swedish music magazine mm -hmm. who no, that nobody's ever heard of unless you're into underground music in Sweden, I guess. <laughs> but how did they how did they reach out? To I don't you? know because I on Facebook, you know, because it's my music profile. Just anybody who's on there is on there. And I had everybody who wants to wants to be a part of it yeah and she was a fan of mine from sweden and, and uh emailed me and said that she thought the swedes really needed to know about me and gave me the interview nice so now we're gonna set up a swedish tour i think a lot of us are actually thinking of going to sweden yeah right. <laughs> if we can't i don't know if it's as easy to become a citizen over there as it is over here yeah so okay so let's talk about that because when donald trump won the next day, you had a song out. 
Yeah, <laughs> and like the next day you had a song out. I'm not gonna say head. that I'm a supporter of either candidate. I really loathed both of them. You yeah. Know? Uh, I, I really couldn't decide who was the lesser of two evils. Uh, I, uh, that might sound like a selfish thing to say because I think a lot of people would say it's obviously Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, um, I mean, that's sure enough the truth. That come come to see what's happened since he's been elected. Like, everything that's happened is so awful. So cer- certainly he was the the greater of two evils, apparently. Yeah. And we'll and, just... But no, I was, I'm very upset about it. Not just, not angry at Trump or angry that Trump won, but just angry at all the stuff that has happened. Yeah, to, for us to get to this point. You know, no, in the, no, as a result of it, people are oh, yeah. hurting each other. Yeah, that's and what I, I said want, on Facebook. Yeah. I was just like, you guys are furious, and it's 9.30 in the fucking morning. You people know? are hurting each other. There's much division yeah. amongst all people, even in families. And it's really affecting a lot of people's lives. And I was very upset. And there's no greater way to deal with something that pisses you off than harsh noise. So yeah. I, I made an anti-Donald Trump. Harsh noise track. It's, I think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I actually got. It got it, I, I actually got in a uh, damn near got in a fight. I think I almost got kicked out of my gym because we were playing the track at the at the gym. And they asked us to turn it off because I was using audio samples from Donald Trump's. And it's him talking out yeah. in public in front of you know what I mean. They voted for him, yeah. but they they didn't like what we were. They didn't like the recordings that we were. Too soon. Too soon. Well, no, just, no. No. <laughs> they were embarrassed of what their president was was saying. Nobody wants to point out, you know, the, stu- the stupid parts. But. Uh, well, all right, we're gonna go on a quick quick commercial break. Uh, Wolf is gonna put on an epic set for us, and then we'll be right back, guys. Thank you. <laughs>
enjoyed that because that was pretty fucking epic <laughs> <laughs> i bet you weren't ready for that shit were you no we'll see that's what the show's all about you know people are just like oh you're just hip-hop and i'm like nah man not at all like it's just this well, show yeah, hip-hop's a lot more popular for sure yeah <laughs> but they i mean it's just i want to bring all kinds of artists into uh you know abs so they could have a place where they could talk about whatever creative passion they have mm -hmm. so um tell me about some gear because i know we've talked about different things about what you like and how particular they are to your music so what's your favorite pedal and how does that work i think a lot of people expect that i have a lot of fancy stuff mm -hmm. and that's how i do some of the crazy stuff that i do but i honestly don't you know i started out with a freaking macbook basically mm -hmm. a keyboard and that was, those were like the earliest of wolf party releases yeah yeah um even the videos yeah the I, videos are like by the time i started really performing live shows very often i realized the computers are super boring so that's what i've been investing in a lot of like music gear, like live gear, so that I can so that I can do it all live instead yeah. of all that pre-recorded stuff. Well, I mean, really, it's like you just need to have, uh, I guess, that creative passion for it. Because like my camera is eight years old, my computer is six years old, but you know, I'm still able to produce shit. Everything I record on is like ten, my that computer is ten years old, and I oh, I'm running really like bad. a fucking ten year old uh, version of Apple, what Apple's whatever Windows, yeah, yeah, whatever they have for Windows, yeah. <laughs> I have a 10 year old version of it. Nice. So, uh, tell me about, um, I guess, uh, collaborations. Like, who are the, because there's a big, uh, noise scene in San Antonio and Austin. So, who would you be like is also the people you love collaborating in? I think slash probably this year. You? Yeah. I think probably this year will be different in the sense that I released a lot of stuff all by myself this year. But I think this year, I think I'm, I'm going to take a break from, trying so much to come up with new stuff and, and compose new ideas and stuff and just you know just like you said collaborate with my friends and release like some splits and collabs and just fun stuff like that mm -hmm. and um are some people that i know i'll probably co end up collaborating with for sure is one of the only guys here in San, San antonio who does harsh noise fierce deity fierce duty fierce, fierce deity yeah. okay cool cool he's a cool guy and he's a close friend of mine too and we will most likely do some crazy harsh noise stuff together here soon. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Twitching Kitten in Austin is a crazy harsh noise band, too. They want to do something with me. So we'll probably end up... As a matter of fact... Is that fact, who I saw that one night? 
What the, the other one that was over there? The one that was like being like spanked. The guy that no, was no, being no, spanked. No, no. It was a different one. Okay, <laughs> I was just like, this is awesome. Yeah, but <laughs> no, that anti-Trump harsh noise stuff that I'm doing is going to be called American Refugee. It's going to be the name of the tape. Okay, the guy from Twitch Quit Kitten wants to release that cassette for me. Okay, so that might be on a cassette from from them in Austin. Okay, soon. so what um, do you have? Because this is a creatively free kind of like music what you have but is there any influences uh within the industry that you love i would definitely say that i've done a very good job of not trying to emulate anybody that i look up to or admire yeah. but you can definitely for sure hear my influences it's just going to come out of you naturally if you've been listening to it for years and years that's where your heart goes and that's where you're going to go with those controls you know what i mean yeah. but yeah who's been a huge influence on me that i should mention is uh the band hell Okay. I, I, I'm That's not, their name, just Hell? Yeah, Hell. H-E-A-L-T-H. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And a lot of people probably know who they are. I'm not a huge fan of what they've been doing lately, but the, like, the self-titled album is kind of maybe the reason I'm doing why I'm doing what I'm doing. It, it changed me forever. You. Yeah. I never sought in music uh, what I sought for after I, I heard that. I wanted to hear something new forever after that. I couldn't go back to the verse chorus kind of stuff okay <laughs> has, has there been any like unusual circumstances that have come in uh creating music or any kind of stories amongst like you know the struggle of creating music or whatever sorry for me that like is there have there been any like uh obstacles that have come across your way uh while creating oh, sure. music? absolutely i mean who doesn't face obstacles any kind of artist first of all nobody gives a shit about art yeah so <laughs> no one cares your, about what you're doing there's your them. number one obstacle is yeah nobody gives a fuck about art yeah yeah entertainment maybe yeah, yeah that's the people highly consume that but there's nothing artistic about any of that yeah well, yeah, in a way, I mean, it just depends uh, who's who's uh, entertaining you. But then, yeah, also, I'm definitely a, a weirdo, for sure. And everything I make is fucking weird, so it's it's either you love it or you hate it. So yeah. I definitely have people who hate it, and I'm okay with that. Well, I totally agree with, <laughs> uh, with the comment that no one cares about art, because they don't care unless they see you, you know, putting it out more and more and more, and you, like, finalizing it and uh, making it nice where they're going to start, uh, I guess, appreciating your form of art a little bit more. But it's the same thing with, like, a lot of people, you know. It's that consistency that we were talking about, you know. Just, you're always fucking making music. You're always putting out music. You're always doing shows, you know. And that's where the care for the art comes from, you know. Right. But no one's going to give a fuck about you, you know, yeah. when you're first starting. And it's very, very uh, discouraging. Yeah, it is. You know what artists. I have to say, though? Nobody gave enough fucks about this album. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 to, I had to plug it. I listened to it on SoundCloud a lot. It's, I love it. I, I should love it. And you know what? There's so much t more to it than just being a crazy sound experimentation album. There's more to it than just being uh, my favorite album. There's a message behind it, honestly, that I care a lot about. But it's more is a story. Like with everything, it is, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like the, it totally sounds like the soundtrack too, and you, the story kind of comes to life for you. It really does, right? Yeah, you kind of you kind of see it in your head as it goes along, and you start to kind of almost feel like you get to know these characters by the end of the album. Yeah, I get the characters, and even you uh, as an artist too. You know, that's where um, you know it started liking. It's like it's the the story. You know that you have the story aspect of it. You're not just right. like putting out songs just to put out. You know, songs. I I want to I want to say this because I've never said it on camera before. I said it in an interview once, but they asked me what this album was about, what my project was about, and I told them that Wolf Party is the project about an undead cowboy serial killer who rises from the grave to claim his bride, and it's based on a true story. Yeah, no, that was me trying to be creepy. <laughs> and they were just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Well, what interview was that? Um, with Floored Magazine. They're a local magazine here in San Antonio. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, do you got any uh, shows coming up here soon? Because this will be released on Wednesday. Uh, do you have anything coming up in the next week or two? Um, no. I'm yeah. I mean, I'm going on vacation with my family for Thanksgiving. When I come oh, back at the end perfect. of November, I'm playing in Austin at the Volstead Lounge, which is basically Hotel Vegas. It's like a separate bar. Um, yeah. built into Hotel Vegas. Where, and where every on? Monday they uh, host like uh, a local showcase for Austin weirdo stuff, like mm -hmm. sound art, sound experimentation. There's so such an abundance of that stuff there in Austin that they have a weekly show where there's like three to five artists 
doing some really wild stuff. And this time I get to, I'm really excited to play it. So I'm going to be playing that with my friends. Several of my fr artist friends in Austin are going to be playing it too. Super cool. Uh, where are you going on vacation? To Florida. Nice. Yeah. I need to go with you one of these times. Yeah. Next summer. That's right. We've been talking about it. We've been we'll, talking we'll about make it for a while. One day. Yeah. You yeah. gotta head out to Florida. If we can get everybody to commit. Uh, yeah, you know, and not cancel. Yeah. I'll say it. You guys suck, but I love you. You suck, but I love you. But anyways, you got any uh any final words uh to leave the Alamo Paper Studio watchers? Yes. My final words would be support Wolf Party. Look for Wolf Party. I've done a lot. I've put a lot into it. It means a lot to me. And there's stuff out there to... It's like um, a multifaceted art experience. It's not just about music. Go look at the videos and see all the kind of performance arts type stuff I've done. Listen to the albums because it, there's the, they're, they're, I go so many different places. And there's really something for every for everybody. Yeah. There is some stuff that's not all noisy and sound art. There yeah. is some stuff that's catchy that's like music and... Well, I mean, yeah, I just, I just saw uh, Wolf Party on SoundCloud, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. My hashtag is Wolf Party Noise. This album is the album to start with, for sure. And then there's tons more stuff to explore. If you go to my band camp, it's the only place that has my entire discography. You can get Wolf Party albums on Spotify and iTunes and all that kind of stuff. But only band camp has my entire discography. Some of it's completely free to download. Nice. Nice. Any shout outs you want to give out? Um, I mean, uh, shout out to all my, my friends. There you my, go. My babies here in San Antonio, I'm here to Shine Kesri. And to my best friend, Joshua Rangel. I uh, love him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to give a shout out to Josh. I love him so much. <laughs> and, um, I guess like, I want to just send a shout out to probably How I Quit Crack. I don't know if they're ever going to watch this, but wow, that's an artist from Austin who's not only one of my favorite artists but also has become a close personal friend of mine and is a total music mentor to me. Changed my life, changed, really opened my whole world. I thought I was into weird music when I met this girl. Mm -hmm. And she opened my whole world up, my mind up. And she's really big in the community, too. Yeah, she's a huge... Her and her husband, Chris, who goes by Skullcaster, are both major... I've called them... I wrote an article about them. I called them major contributors to the world of uh, sound art, sound experimentation, noise. All right. Well, Austin, I mean, Wolf. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> a lot of people know my name is Austin. <laughs> wolf, I'll edit both of those out. No, I don't know. Wolf, thanks for uh, coming down. Cheers. Mm. <sighs> and I'll see you soon. Yes. I hope you guys liked this episode with my good buddy Wolf Party, and we will have him back on here soon. Um, soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be doing something very different, very new, very soon. I'm sure I change a lot. But uh, check his shit out. Have a good night.